Hey guys, it's Kat, and I thought that I would, you know, give you guys my opinion and thoughts on the creep show art situation. And I'm going to be doing a little speed paint while I do so. Um, this is going to be a sketch that's very much inspired by some of the art that has been made by other folks during this time, during this conversation. I saw some Medusa drawings. I saw a lot of um, Shannon's um, orange and black hair. So I got very inspired and this is kind of what I came up with. It's sort of a poopy sketch, but whatever. Um, but anyway, we're here to talk about the creep show art discourse because for those of you guys who don't know there are quite a few things to unpack within it so creep Shart is a, a creator who makes a lot of content calling people out she does a lot of stuff about accountability and she tends to align herself fairly strongly with standing up for minorities lgbtqia plus folks standing against racism etc 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 and a really big central part of the stuff that she makes is calling out child predators well recently um, it was, it came to the surface that on LolCal, which is basically a 4chan-esque site where people talk shit about people, Shannon was pretending to be somebody else, trying to be anonymous while on one hand promoting herself and on the other hand talking shit about herself. And this is actually against the rules of LolCal. So the moderators revealed her identity on LolCal and revealed that she had been speaking quite a few negative things about people that she really publicly has said positive things about. She was being transphobic. She was saying things that some people consider to be racist. Um, she also was talking shit about other people's art. And I have a lot of things to say about um, that particular aspect of this, this conversation. Um, this video will not go over all of the receipts. That's really not what I'm here for. If you are curious about all this stuff, I will link a couple of very handy videos that go over it in the description box. I'm just gonna assume that because there's been a million videos that have been watched at this point, you know, that you kind of already know what's what's going on. And for those of you guys who are new to this conversation and wondering how people know that it's her, um, Shannon came out and said that she was dealing with a stalker who was spoofing her IP. And we now understand that, that first of all, um, that's probably not the case. Somebody would have to be incredibly invested in her in order to actually spoof her IP. But more so than that, there have been people who have come out and kind of confirmed that Shannon very much does this, including her own sibling, who by the way, identifies as non-binary, whom Shannon has misgendered throughout a couple of these conversations. So you guys know I am an artist who is transgender, who is, makes YouTube videos for a living and has for 15 years. So I have a lot of opinions about this entire situation. And I just wanted to share them with you guys because I am sort of baffled by some of the reactions to this conversation. So let's get into it. But before we get into this video, I wanted to let you guys know that it's sponsored by CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is an online subscription service that's all about expanding our understanding of the world. From science to history to art, there are thousands of titles that you can watch right now on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream has also teamed up with the Streamy Award nominated streaming service Nebula that's all about empowering independent creators just like myself to create the things that they would like to create but can't quite create on YouTube. Right now, if you go to curiositystream.com slash catblack and put in the code catblack and check out, you'll get 26% off of an annual membership of both Nebula and CuriosityStream. That's $14.79 for a year's worth of CuriosityStream and Nebula. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled programming. So I'm gonna first start out by saying that I used to follow a lot of Shannon's stuff. Um, I followed her pretty early on, I wanna say. I feel like I've been following her for a while. Um, and I feel like I also remember, and maybe that somebody else has a shared experience with this, but I feel like I remember watching her earlier videos and they were, f they were really sort of straight to the point, straightforward, you know, personable, um, you know, they were different basically. And at some point, um, a lot of her videos um, were her starting with this very long monologue about how she doesn't like herself or this or this or that, just speaking really, really poorly about themselves. And I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but you know, I think that it's very normal for people, especially artists, to be slightly self-deprecating. But I, I, personally, I register people who self-deprecate 
to the degree at which Shannon self-deprecated as just as kind of full of themselves as people who publicly are self-aggrandizing. Um, to me, it just always sort of sounds like you're just really, really into you, which, you know, hey, you should be or whatever. But um, I don't know why um, we always needed to hear about this all the time. But maybe that's just my, for my personal taste. But long story short, that particular approach really, really turned me off. And so I used to have her videos going on in the background all the time whenever there was just some long video that she would post because that's the kind of stuff that I like to consume, long commentary videos. And then at a certain point for me, a lot of the stuff became unwatchable. And not only that, but I personally felt like some of the ways that she handled certain topics expressed that she was potentially not as invested in the conversation as she had presented. Um, this was kind of a big thing for me because she's talking about some really, really important, um, very, very hard hitting things. And I just truly feel like those topics need to be handled with care. And there were a couple of situations where she didn't do her research, where she clearly, you know, was going off of a couple of he said, she said sort of things and being very, very severe in her conviction, convictions of other people. And this was all really serious stuff. This was all really, really intense stuff. And I, I guess I, 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 I got turned off because, you know, I think when you handle some very heavy topics, you have to handle them very, very lightly. And I felt like some of the ways in which she discussed some of these things did not express that she was handling them with the degree of care in, in which I expect for people to. Um, and so I kind of just lost interest in her content. And so, um, when with all that in mind when it was kind of revealed that she was making these posts on lol cow i was genuinely not surprised i was genuinely not shocked at all whatsoever because the way that she speaks about herself on lol cow is the way that she speaks about herself in, in her videos so that's that you know i was not surprised that it turned out to be her and um i don't buy into the um this amy person stalked me narrative personally just because it is so implausible um especially when you think about the, the, the idea that she befriended her stalker something that i would never do um i think most people who've dealt with stalking would never do um and you know i'll get into this later but even in that narrative there's a lot of things that shannon said that were always you know she would speak poorly about herself but she would say things like this person who stalked me for years i befriended her and please don't attack her because i care about her and she has kids all these things that are kind of like constructed to make you feel like she's a good person and i've always personally felt like you know i think people <laughs> i you know i've always hated the fake shit. okay i've always hated the fake shit. you know you will never catch me being overtly positive and nice to somebody who i don't actually care about um, or care for. And, you know, as revealed in these lol cow posts, there was some fake shit that was going on. And I just personally was not shocked by it because the way that she phrased a lot of stuff seemed like fake shit. And I personally digested almost every time when she fawned over a creator, you know, especially D'Angelo Wallace, um, as a form of love bombing, you know, this sort of like, you're, you're overdoing your adoration of this person. And she would do this a lot with even smaller creators who had far less notoriety. And it just, I don't know, it just all often felt, you know, super false. And I think partially because half the time when she would do this sort of love bombing thing, she would very rarely mention super, super specific things that she liked. It was always just, you know, a copy and paste of adoration and maybe a couple of videos that, that, that she watched, but you know, never, uh, you know, this full deep, you know, understanding of who this person is and why exactly you like them. But um, that's personally my reading of it. I, people can read it the, a different way, but that's personally how I digested a lot of it. So one of the things I wanted to talk about in this video, and I don't know, and I think this is one hell of a hot take, and I don't know if people are going to hear me when I say this, but one of the aggravating aspects of this conversation is that you know, I've been sort of dancing around this this conversation of, of, of sort of performative activism on my YouTube channel, because this is something that I actually find quite bizarre. You know, it is very common for me, especially within my Los Angeles scene, to see people who, uh, you know, their, their performative activism says one thing, how they act in their personal life says another. 
And I've always been really frustrated with people who speak out of both sides of their mouth because especially as somebody who is a minority in so many ways, I don't want to, um, you know, be in a situation where I've given you all of this love and support for being on my side, but it was all something that you were doing so that you could look a certain way. And unfortunately, I think that a lot of the things that Creepshow Art did, a lot of the, the stuff that she created was her latching on to certain conversations that definitely have some validity to them um, to make herself look like a good person. And that super, super, super turns me off. Um, I would like for people to understand that even, you know, rapists in prison hate pedophiles. Um, some people, there's a lot of people on here who have created content in the past couple of years calling out child predators. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that we should call out child predators. I think that we should call out the normalization of pedophilia and things like that in certain contexts. I think that that is something that we should definitely, 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 definitely talk about, right? That all being said, I think that some people don't understand that standing up against a pedophile does not make you a good person in every other context. It doesn't. And I've sort of seen this thing where people will do that. And then when they're called out, they'll point to, well, I stand up against child predators, which is kind of a universal evil that everybody hates, right? And I'm not gonna say that, you know, again, it's good to call this shit out. And I think that a lot of stuff that Shannon called out in that vein, she was right to call out, right? But my argument here is that doing that on its own does not make you a good person. There's a lot of people who make really shitty stuff on this website who are really, really, really hard on pedophiles and people give them a lot of credit for being a good person for it. But I think that people forget that once again, even rapists in prison hate pedophiles, right? If you do something to a child and your, your inmates find out about it, you're going to get messed up. That is something that, you know, people who have done the worst things in the world will, will, will still come at you and mess you up because of that. So I don't really believe in giving people all of this um, support simply because they called out pedophilia. I, I don't believe in that. And personally, what I've seen with even this, the Chris, Chris Hansen stuff, which, which Shannon has talked a lot about, um, you know, there's a lot of people who have created this this career on, on calling out child predators. And for some people, you can see in the way that they act that it's way more about the money than it is about anything else. One of the interesting things that has come out about this particular topic um, is that Shannon had expressed at one point that she was over YouTube. She didn't wanna make YouTube videos. And one of the things that she talked about in her LolCal post that was also confirmed by um, a voice chat, a uh, voicemail that she um, had was that she was wanting to leave YouTube, but she was making $20,000 a month on YouTube and she um, couldn't walk away from the money. And I think that that was a really interesting thing to acknowledge because she, in her LolCal post and in her conversations with um, Repzilla, was talking about making all of this money, but you look at the content that she's making and it's her calling people out for doing things that are messed up, i.e. pedophilia, you know? And there's something that's always made me super, super uncomfortable about people who make content purely for income, purely for personal gain. You know, I get sponsors um, all the time and I, you know, I'm not gonna act like you know, that's not nice and that I don't enjoy money. But when I call stuff out, I'm always calling it out because I actually give a fuck about it. I don't call stuff out because it makes me money. In fact, calling stuff out is not, um, you know, often a popular thing to do. People do enjoy watching people get called out. People do enjoy the sort of mob mentality on the internet and, and, dra and dragging people down, especially if it's for something just like fighting against child predators, yes. Um, but I think that people are ignoring that for some people, this is a business. And that's why in certain situations, it's really not important that you get all of the details right. That's why in some situations, um, Shannon 
added a little bit of spice to some of her stories. Didn't quite check facts, even when she was fact checked, kept videos up. Because for a lot of people at the end of the day, this is money. This is all about money. And I think that you can have your happy, you know, medium of calling stuff out and making money. But when you're pumping out that many videos about this many things that requires so much focus and so much understanding, so much full understanding, I don't trust that you're always dotting your 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 your, your eyes and, and 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 crossing your T's, um, and minding your P's and Q's, because how could you? How could you? How could you make so much content back to back to back to back to back about something as sensitive as assault and abuse and all this other stuff? and always know that you're getting everything right. Now, something that came out is that a lot of Shan a lot of Shannon's posts were about a, a, a YouTuber named Emily Artful. There's a lot to talk about here. I'm gonna talk about the stuff that's personally relevant to me um, and just my own feelings, especially as a survivor and as an artist. So here we go. I don't know Shannon, I don't know Shannon's situation, but um, Emily apparently used to date her husband. And Emily, um, in her video about the situation, claimed that Shannon's husband, potentially husband, we don't know if they're married or not, but Shannon's husband raped Emily. And it's very interesting to know that and to understand that because so much of what Creep Show made was calling out stuff like that. And uh, I don't know how this is gonna sound really, but you know, one of the things I'm not crazy about online, especially as a blogger, is that so many people expect for us to all do things that are 100% consistent and, and, and sensible and ras rational and reasonable. But human nature kind of isn't that way, you know? Again, I don't know all of what Shannon's been through, but it's fairly common for people who have been through shit to be in situations with people who are abusive in that way, who, who assault in that way, and make excuses in your mind for why this is an exception, why this person isn't that bad. And one of the issues that Shannon had with her sibling was that her sibling, uh, you know, I, I'm assuming after hearing Emily's stuff, rightfully so, um, was calling out her, her, her husband for being abusive and was being protective of her. And Shannon didn't want to hear that. She didn't want to hear that this person she was probably deeply in love with was potentially not a great person. And I've been there, you know, I've spoken openly about being in a relationship with somebody who I later found out was accused of rape. And, you know, when I was in that situation, um, I didn't really know what to believe, <clears throat> you know? It's you, 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 you know, I just based off of what Emily said about her ex, I can imagine that, that he very much established who Emily was to her. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's so important for women to talk to each other because men will do this all the time where they will say, she's just this crazy, you know, drug addicted person who, you know, did X, Y, and Z to me. And that's who she is. You don't hear about all the other stuff. You, you don't hear about all the abuse because he didn't tell you about that stuff. You don't hear about the assaults, but you hear that she's this terrible person. That's why she's saying this, da, 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 da. You would think that somebody in her position would say, well, we need to listen to and believe women. But sometimes that's not as easy as I think a lot of us would imagine it to be. Um, and especially if you've been in situations like that, it seems like an obvious thing to not want to be associated with somebody who could even be accused of that. But you probably intimately understand in your own processing of trauma that things get mixed up and you start making excuses for maybe that maybe this per didn't happen or maybe this wasn't something that was true. You start kind of like, you know, because you're, of your own processing of trauma, um, making excuses for why this might not have actually been the case. And I'm not gonna say that it's a-okay for her to doubt. I'm just gonna say that I kind of get being somebody who calls stuff out 
like that who ends up in a relationship with somebody who turns out to do that and you don't really have much of a recourse because of just the way that you've processed your own experience. Again, I don't know Shannon's situation, but that's just what came to mind. Um, so on the subject of Emily Artful, um, she spent a lot of time talking shit about her art on Lol Cow, and there was a lot of talking shit about Emily's art, Holly's art, several other people's art. And, you know, <laughs> Again, when I read through the lol cow post, it seemed like it was fairly consistent with the stuff that I saw and heard in her videos because, <clears throat> you know, the vibe that I often got from Shannon was that she was very, <sighs> how to say this? Um, I don't even know the best way to phrase this, but, um, hmm, I don't know to how to politely say this at all. I'm trying, I'm struggling. Um, let's just put it this way. Most of the people that I've known in, in the art world who talk shit about other people's art are often, like loudly, um, are often not people who themselves are particularly talented. Uh, and I'm not saying that you can't talk shit, but I'm just saying that that, that kind of talking shit, um, I've never seen somebody who's focused and honed in on their craft you know, spending all that time talking about how, because I mean, for those of you guys who obviously didn't see it, a lot of the, a lot of the sort of posts she would make were comparing Creepshow's art, her art, to other people's art and saying, well, Creepshow's art is so much better, da 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 You know, and it's like, mm. <laughs> I think that Shannon has definitely improved, but I wish that she spent half of the time she spent, you know, talking shit about people's art, talking shit about people, period, developing her skill. Because to me, that's a more productive use of time than talking shit, you know? So that's the thing I wanted to point out only because I just, I, I think that as artists, we should be supporting each other. Um, and I was, I remember being on GoGaia Online and DeviantArt.com in the early days of my art career and having those weird shitty arguments where people were talking shit about each other's art and this is so bad and that's so bad and da 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 and, and pretty much none of us were talented artists, <laughs> you know? And that's just kind of how it is, I think, is, you know, people should be focusing on their own craft, honing their own craft instead of devoting so much time to speaking about how somebody else's craft is, you know, the worst of the worst of the worst, right? So something else I wanted to talk about is her transphobic comments. Now on this note, she did indeed say tranny. You know, she did indeed say um, what a lot of people consider to be a slur. I've never really understood fuckboy as a slur, though I've read those, those Tumblr posts several times. Um, I know that some people consider it to be that way. I can see how people are trying to make it the, uh, into that. Um, but I don't pers I don't, that's not how I've ever heard the term used, but I'm going to respect the fact that it's used, that some people digest it that way. And that's that. I think tranny is definitely a, a, a more um, a gratuitous um, example of her being transphobic, but Shannon would do stuff where she would be very, very preachy about, you know, respecting trans folks publicly while privately calling people trannies. And that's probably very surprising to a lot of people, but it is not surprising to me. You know, I've talked a lot about trauma on my channel. And one of the things that I've learned about my trauma is that I have a very, very hard time registering um, compliments as truthful because of the fact that I have known all throughout my life, people who say one thing to me publicly to my face and another thing privately out of my earshot, you know? I know people right now who in their public life are, you know, Mr. Wokey Mc, McWokerson on work, w Wokerson Lane, you know? And they're all about supporting trans folks and, and, and respecting their pronouns and da 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 da. But when they're not in the earshot of um, one of their, you know, their people in their life who is, is that, 
they're misgendering them, they're fucking up pronouns, they're arguing why their their identity isn't valid, da 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 And I think this is a good p- time to point out that again, Shannon's sibling is non-binary. Shannon's sibling, who she doxed, is non-binary. And I know that there was a lot of that sort of talk around them specifically, right? And so, you know, I guess really what I'm trying to say here is that as, as shitty as this sounds, and I know that this isn't fair, I tend not to buy into the cis person loudly, you know, speaking against transphobia, um, especially in this kind of way, especially in in a way where it's, you know, it's one thing to say, you know, ladies, gal, gals and non-binary pals, you know, to, you know, to in your, (laughs) in your introduction, Um, because you know that that's something that people in the audience will appreciate. It's another thing to really radically shift your mindset to where you understand that not everybody you meet is a cis person, where you have learned to have true empathy for trans folks. Some people only show support to trans people when there's money attached. Some people only show support to trans folks when it makes them look good. There's other people who their inclusion of trans folks is just such a, a central portion of their the way of navigating through the world that of course when they you know, have conversations about really anyone, they're going to be inclusive of trans people and it's going to be genuine. And going back to what I said before about a lot of this stuff her, she, you know, her, her said that a lot of stuff that she, um, she said feeling disingenuine to me. I think it was because there was such a intense focus on discussing that, you know, in, in this way, but you can tell by the way that she discussed other stuff that she didn't quite feel that way. I mean, and I think I kind of felt that way when I watched her video about, um, that racist Tumblr, um, artist, because, Obviously, I understood why some people were uncomfortable with a lot of the stuff discussed in that video, but there were other things where I was just like, I don't know if this is really your your place to, you know, invalidate people. Of course, there are going to be trans men who don't like the idea of being seen as feminine. Of course, there's going to be trans folks who don't like the idea of having uh, ha- of being fetishized in that way. But there are also plenty of trans men who enjoy being feminine and also enjoy some of the fetishes that were discussed in that particular um, Tumblr blog. And it's sort of strange to me to take that and extract that idea and make it so that like, you know, this is all bad because of some understanding that you have of trans folks and not, you know, a general larger trans discourse that is going to have very different opinions about this, if that makes any sense, you know? And so I'm not totally surprised that she was saying transphobic shit. That's kind of par for the course, if I'm being fucking honest with you. I kind of anticipate that most cis people are gonna only, you know, sort of do that the tolerance thing to your face and 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 th- and, and and talk their their honesty behind your back. And plenty of people feel like, oh my god, we can't just say what we feel publicly anymore. Um, you know, especially as a trans person who tends to be read as cis, it's very. It's I've had people say transphobic things to my face, not knowing that I was trans. And it's 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 interesting because you know that there are trans folks in that person's life who very much would assume that because this person says nice things in front of them, that they actually are nice and do actually support them. But so frequently, that's not the case. You know, all in all, for me, this was just a. a Uh, a situation where somebody was ousted for being disingenuine while, you know, building a platform on being genuine and being real, hashtag real, you know? And I just, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm surprised that so many people saw Shannon as like a motherly figure because my mom does not whine nearly as much. (laughs) My mom does not whine nearly as much. So I I don't, I personally don't understand that particular reading of Shannon. Um, But that being said, I understand that people do form, you know, parasocial relationships. Shannon was a person who people droned through their house for days on end through several different videos for hours on end. So, you know, I, I get, I get why she was important and why you were disappointed by who she turned out to be. I really do. You know, I will also say that most of us put on a face. Most of us present 
one way and are a different way in our personal lives. Most of us are curating our personality. I'm very real, I'll just say I'm very real, but you know, um, I'm sure that you would notice different things about me if you spent time with me in person for long periods of time. And I might even do some stuff or not care for certain things um, that, that might surprise you because you mostly hear of me in the context of caring about certain things, right? And so I'm not totally shocked that Shannon didn't turn out to be who she said she was. Um, I think the talking behind people's backs is really, really shitty, but also I guess I sort of anticipate that as well. I don't know. I've not known trust and protection in my life, so I don't often just take people for who they are um, until I see that they are who they say they are. That's, again, trauma talking. Um, but I would really encourage people to just always be critical of the people whom they follow and to always, you know, avoid putting anybody on the pedestal because, you know, again, I, I don't understand why Shannon was put on the pedestal. Um, I think that she said a lot of things that she knew people wanted to hear. I think that she expressed herself in a way that she knew would be popular. I think that she rubbed shoulders with people who certainly um, <laughs> were going to not call her out. There's a reason why she's so, you know, she, she got to know so many commentary channels and things like that. Like, I think she was very deliberate in not only the way that she presented herself, but also the people that she associated with. And, you know, <laughs> that's calculated and that's business and da, da 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 But I hate the fact that it was mixed into so many really important conversations. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think that people should just 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 avoid putting people on pedestals. One of the things that I really appreciated off of Emily's video is when she talked about being somebody who um, was an anti-feminist, um, who said a lot of really, you know, pick me type stuff. She didn't try to push herself away from that image. She didn't try to push herself away from her past as an addict she was like, no, this is me. I'm not gonna act like that's not me and that wasn't me. This is me, I've grown beyond that. Um, and, you know, I am who I am today, but this is still part of the timeline that creates me, right? And personally, I think that for Shannon, this is, time of the, this is part of the timeline that creates her. And I think that she has made decisions to be a certain way in life now, but she doesn't have to do that forever. Um, I think that as long as Shannon kind of lies, frankly, that's going to just be much, 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 much harder. But I think that it's very, very possible for her to, you know, take a step back, you know, take some time and come back with more fervor and with more... Um, passion and I think that she can actually I think that it's possible for her to come through and for her to, to, to come back but I don't think she's going to be able to do it without like acknowledging that she what she was doing everybody loves a redemption arc okay um, people love a redemption arc and I don't think that, that Shannon can be the same person she was before but I think that she can possibly come back but she needs to start by admitting that it was her admitting what she's done and I think that that's how she can grow. And even if she doesn't do that, I hope that she admits to herself what she's done. Because in my opinion, these are real screenshots. These are things that she actually said. <laughs> there's really not a lot of forget you, you know, there's not, um, you can't really, there's, <laughs> there's only so much forgiving you can really do, truly. Um, but yeah, I think that's my opinion. Anyway, on that note, I'll talk to you guys later. This is my drawing. Um, you know, I'm rusty. I haven't made art in a really long time. I am working on some art videos for you guys. Hopefully, I'll be able to get those to you guys. Those to you guys before, um, you know, the end of the month. But you know, y'all know I'm going through burnout, and it's it's been a journey. So we're 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 just trying to make fun stuff right now, and we'll come back with the harder hitting stuff soonish. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.